Hi everyone. So I thought today I would show you uh, a really simple technique that gives you a fabulous background. So we are going to be using a couple of Distress Oxides and we're going to create a lovely inky panel butterfly card. So I'll just take that little screen off there so I can go through what I'm going to be using today. So I'm going to be using uh, a combination of products and I'm going to show you a couple of different options as well. So the first thing I'm just going to show you is I'm going to make an A5 card, which is another size that I don't make very often. Most of my cards tend to be bigger, as you know, but sometimes, particularly these days, uh, postage is a bit of an issue. So we're always trying to design and make cards that we know will fit in an envelope and you can post them. So I'm just going to quickly show you. So I've got my, I've created my A5 card blank there. And all this is, is my alabaster white card. So the alabaster is like a soft white rather than a pure white. In fact, if I get a sheet of pure white, I can show you the difference. So just get that in the light. You can see the difference there. So pure white is, is brilliant um, and absolutely blinding white. And then you've got the alabaster white, which is not a cream. Uh, if you're collecting my cardstock and you have the Almond U cardstock, the alabaster is paler than that. It's almost like milk in, in, in comparison. It's like really like an off-white. And I love the alabaster white. It's one of my favourite, favourite colours of card. It gives you really classy finishes. And I've teamed that up with my Olive Grove cardstock. So we've got the card blank, we've got a layer of Olive Grove, and then we've got another sheet of the Alabaster white there. And I've replicated that for the inside because we are going to decorate the inside of the card as well. So I'm just going to pop that to one side so I can show you the colours that I'm going to be working with. So I've chosen for today's card the absolutely gorgeous new colour from the Distress Oxide range, which is the Uncharted Mariner. It's a beautiful, beautiful, almost like a petrol blue colour. And I've teamed that up with one of my favourite greens, which is Peeled Paint. So I also love Bundled Sage, but I wanted a stronger colour for this. So Peeled Paint is perfect. And you can see that they they work really nicely together. So they're the two, this is all I'm gonna use today, believe it or not. So we've got the Distress Oxides in Uncharted Mariner and peeled paint. And for the stamps, I thought we'd try something that we've not used for a while. So these are the um, the strip stamps that I designed. Uh, I can't remember whether it was last year. So we, um, we've got two different ranges in these. So just to break it down for people that might not know me or might not follow on Facebook already, I have the uh, Papillon Paradise strips and they are almost they're not quite dl they are dl in length but they're narrower which means if you would like to make tall slim cards these are absolutely perfect for your backgrounds but also you can multi-stamp them so you can create larger backgrounds just by doing repeating the pattern so i'll show you these in more detail so you've got this one here which is called the journey so the one that is called the journey has postage marks in there you can see all the beautiful butterflies that i've got in there uh, postage marks, postage stamps, and so on and so forth. Then you have one called Moments in Time, which they are look, Moments in Time, which again has the beautiful butterflies feature throughout. But this time we've got clocks and time pieces uh, as the extra elements, and the quill there, and the clock hands, and so on. A little bit of music and script in there as well. And then you have the moving mechanisms, which is one of my favorites. So the moving mechanisms has, uh, as you would expect, it's got the gears and the cogs in there. You've got a little bit of a honeycomb going on in the background and some crackle detail. And these are, you can see I've used these loads. These are beautiful, beautiful stamps that give you quick, easy results with lots of detail. So they were the first ones I did. The Papillon, the Papillon Paradise were the first set. And then I did, after that, I did the dragonflies because I always, I love dragonflies. People that know me will know that. I just think there's something really magical about, about dragonflies. But this time I introduced extra text. So you have within the dragonfly sets, you have sentiments that you can chop up or you can leave them in so it creates a whole, 
a whole panel. So this one is called Believe in Magic and the text that's in here says Believe in Magic and you will find it and then underneath it says everywhere. So Believe in Magic and you, oh, that's back to front. Believe in Magic and you will find it everywhere, which I think is just fabulous. It's an all occasion, an all occasion sentiment. It doesn't have to be a birthday. It's good for your journals, good for your mixed media and it's just a really, really beautiful stamp. So that is your Believe in Magic. Then you have Take Time. So Take Time has got uh, some paisley in there. It's got some stars in there. It's got some postmarks. It's got post stamps. So you can see how, as a collection, these are going to work really, really well together. So that's the Take Time. And the sentiment in here says, Take Time to do what makes you happy. Love that. So you can absolutely stamp this a second time and chop out the words, just, just fussy cut the words and create your own unique sentiments. You can just use take time. You can do do what makes you happy and so on and so forth. So that is the um, take time. And then the last one we have in the Dragonfly Oasis collection. I mean, look at that dragonfly. How beautiful are these? Yeah. So the last one we have in the Dragonfly Oasis set is the Be Your True Self. And I just love this one as well. This one makes it a, a unique a sentiment that you can use in the stamp or out of the stamp so this one says be your true self you're already fabulous love that and i'll just show you that in a little bit more detail so i'll start from the top so be your true self you're already fabulous brilliant you can use that again for your for your art journals for your mixed media for your canvases and so many different things we are going to use the butterflies today and I'm going to choose, ah, decisions, decisions. Mm -mm -mm, mm -mm, too many choices. I'll go with the journey. I'll go with the journey, which just stops me from oohing and ahhing and spending ages on these. So I've chosen my stamp. The only other stamp that I'm going to use today is the uh, special day from the new Verse Library collection, just because I want to finish this card inside um with this lovely verse and special day is really generic it covers any occasion and we're also going to use the sentiment there that says with love on your special day so again really generic it can be absolutely anything so they are the only two stamps that we're going to use so i'm going to pop those there and we're going to come back to our panels of uh, almond no it's not almond it's alabaster so we're going to come to the two panels of the alabaster white cardstock so traditionally what you see me probably do to create a lovely inky background all over is to uh, spritz colour or rub colour from my oxides on my mat, spritz it with water and then do the pick up technique like this. But I want to create sort of a narrow panel because I'm not going to use the whole of the stamp. You don't have to use these in the in the full size that they are. You could do an A5, A6 section. You can do squares, you can do circles and whatever you want. So we're going to create a little panel just there in these two beautiful colours. And hopefully I'm showing you something that you might not have tried already. So this is for the front of the card. And instead of doing the pickup technique, as I've just explained, I'm going to use one of my acrylic blocks. So the acrylic block is effectively going to be a, a faux, a pretend jelly plate and choices so you can do this whatever size acrylic blocks you've got lying around you can absolutely replicate this so if i wanted to do a full panel if i wanted to do a full panel that is top to bottom i would use my dl acrylic block which goes over the edge of the a5 layer i don't want that i could do a rectangle in the middle look at the state of these blocks pretend you can't see that <laughs> We could do a panel, a rectangle panel in the middle, but I don't want to do that. I want to do a thinner panel just towards the side. So when I over stamp with the sentiment, I want some of the stamp to be hanging over where we have the inky panel in the background. I'm just going to mention to you as well, in case I forget, I'm going to say it now. You can use my acrylic circles for this technique as well. So if you have my acrylic circle blocks, you can absolutely create different circles to to do this as well but i want 
a rectangle panel. So the acrylic, the acrylic blocks that I've got, they're all available uh, on the website. So everything that I'm using today is available on the website. So there you go, got a little screen to show you, honeypotcrafts.co.uk. Everything will be on there. I will try and put links in the in the description when I upload the video later, just saves you a little bit of time. But everything will be uh, on the website. So if you're going for my acrylic blocks, you've probably noticed that I have the SY, just move that to the side. I have the SY for sentimentally yours, etched into the corners. So remember not to use that side. You need to use the other side that is smooth with no etching. And what we're going to do is put some ink on directly onto the block. I'm just going to get some kitchen roll because you know I don't do mess. I don't do messy. I'll let this do the mess for me. And I'm going to turn it on its side because I find it easier to work. When I'm working with longer pieces, I find it easier to work um, horizontally as opposed to vertically. So we're going to go to the non-etched side of the block and we're just going to put some colour on here. Are going to do an almost two tone so remember when this is spritzed we're going to get a lovely watery effect so this will be diluted a little bit it's quite a strong color but it's it's fine we're absolutely fine with that you could do second generation sometimes third generation so while you're adding the ink if you wanted to you could mix it all up and create a completely mixed up color palette in the background but i want to almost panels so I'm just going to overlap a little bit so I'm now going on with the peeled paint it's not going to be perfect it's not going to be like a printer's panel but that's that's not what we're looking for we're looking for a lovely watercolor inky background so I'm just going to bring that in and show you how much ink is on there so you can see the ink obviously doesn't settle because we're using the acrylic the acrylic block it just sits on the surface so now i'm going to spritz that with water and do be quite liberal with the water so i'm using my fine mist my fine mist spray bottle which is on the website one of ours and i like this one because it is a really really fine mist so i'm going to do it on here and then lift it up and pop it on the card so you can see already the ox i think that's probably enough the oxides are reacting to the water and pooling, which is exactly what I wanted. It almost looks like it's been raining. It's been raining with two different colours of Distress Oxide, which is perfect. I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to position this where I want it on my card. Remember, we're not going for perfection, but I am going for as straight as I can get that. So already you can see, I'll just flip that round. Already you can see that the ink has started to transfer onto the card. And it will pull out and it will be patchy. But it's exactly what we're going for. So at this stage I'm going to press this down. You can see that the water is still moving underneath, look. And that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to press this down and it will start to bleed out a little bit. So I'm just going to hold that for a second. And then I'm going to lift that off and I'm going to turn it onto its side to lift it off. Oh, that's fabulous. That is just absolutely fabulous. So let's just move that around while it's still wet. Oh, that's amazing. So normally I would tell you to leave this to dry. I'm going to move that a little bit more because I like that. So moving it a little bit more, I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Oh, fabulous. So let's just let that bleed a little bit. That's awesome. Remember, it will be lighter once this is dried. So we've now created this lovely inky panel. Let's move that a little bit more. If you wanted to, uh, I would normally leave this. So being completely honest with you, I would leave this and just let it dry naturally. But I'm just going to show you, if you don't like the excess, you can lift that off. So just get a bit of, a bit of kitchen roll and take off the excess and it will still it will still dry really lovely so i'm just taking the excess off and then i'm going to give it another little spray with water 
that looks amazing and it's so easy to do so easy to do look at that ah oh, that's just gorgeous oh, that, that's fabulous i love i absolutely love that let me just show you who would have thought that we'd done that with an acrylic block <laughs> so i'm going to pop that to one side i would always 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 recommend that you leave these as long as you can to dry naturally i'm not going to use my heat tool to dry these i'm going to leave them as long as we can and hopefully they will be dry enough to use um this is me that doesn't get dirty long <laughs> amazing so i'm going to come to the middle panel now so for the middle panel i already know if i show you look that the verse would fit quite nicely if i used a rectangle block but I don't want that, I want a strip. So I'm still gonna use the same one. And on the front of the card, as you know, we did a strip to the side. This time I'm gonna do a strip down the middle. So again, making sure I'm not using the etched side. I'm gonna add some Uncharted Mariner, which is just a stunning, stunning color. And some peeled paint. I'm not trying to cover this. I'm just giving it a decent coverage. Remember, the Distress Oxide inks, once activated with water, they go a long, long, long way. And you, well, you, that's how much I've had to wipe up. So that's that, that's that. We're gonna mist that with water again. And put a panel, I'll turn that around, put a panel down the middle of the card. And the verse will the verse will come outside of the panel once we stamp it later on. So quite wet, and we'll repeat what we've just done. So I have the uncharted mariner at the bottom on the front. So I'm going to do the same again. I'm just bringing this a little bit closer to me so I can see where I'm going. Put that as central as I think I can get it and then press that down. You can see the water moving with the cardstock. The colors are amazing, look. And because this isn't specific, this is regular cardstock, this is not watercolor card. And it just means you get a, a, a lovely effect. So I'm gonna lift that off and I'm gonna take the excess off again, just because we can. And I want it to match the front. I, I would normally leave this because you know when these when these pools dry you get lovely you get lovely patches of colour so I would normally leave them to dry but I know we're not gonna have time for that. So I'm gonna give that another little mist with water just so that it bleeds like it did on the front. I'm just gonna show you this lot because that's starting to dry now a lot. So I'm gonna do the same with this one. Just move that card a little bit the ink a little bit more look so it starts to bleed out so we're adding texture just literally by squirting water so i'm going to leave that i'm going to tidy up pop that to one side do, do, do. Oh, when i find a space to put that there we go and then clean my block In fab when you can do things with things you've already got, you can create lovely backgrounds just from a couple of Distress Oxides and, and an acrylic block and a bit of water. Fabulous. Right, so let's get rid of that. Get rid of that. Just make sure I've got no ink on my mat. Right, so now we're going to leave these as long as we can. This is now starting to dry, look. Yeah. The other one still really quite wet so you can see where the card is buckled and bowed that's literally because it isn't watercolor card but don't panic don't worry if your card does this because even once this is dry i'm going to show you a trick for how to flatten that so let's put those out of the way so while we're waiting we will create our little sentiment so from the off cuts from when i was creating the layering for this card um, I had these little strips left over and I thought, yeah, what a fab way to just... <laughs> that was lucky. So what a fab, I need to clean my fingers. 
thought a lovely way to just finish this off. So we're literally just going to have the stamp down there. It's a really quick and easy card, but it's a fabulous technique. And we're going to have the sentiment going across. So we'll stamp the sentiment and we'll stamp the verse. Just so we can leave the um, leave the card start with the panels to dry as long as we can. So while I'm doing all that, please remember... Do, 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 if I can find the right button to press. Here we go. Where are we? So if you are a Facebook user, you can ask to join our lovely little Facebook group. And there are some fabulous crafters in there. It's packed with inspiration and ideas. Lots of help from the group experts, i.e. Bev, and from the rest of the users, uh, the rest of the crafters that are in there. Really friendly bunch. I, I love them all. I love them all dearly. Just, they're so inspirational. Even for me, I get lots of ideas from looking at what they, what everybody else has created. So you can find us on Facebook. So search for Crafting with Phil Martin and Sentimentally Yours. It's the same title as the YouTube channel. And you can also uh, search for Sentimentally Yours on Facebook and, and like the page. So you'll find Sentimentally Yours on Facebook too. And if you, as if that's not enough, you can also find me on Twitter and on Instagram with the same name, so Phil M. Martin. There we go. So we're going to stamp our little sentiment for this card and I'm using the sentiment that comes in the verse. So within the verse stamp sets, you've got a couple of different options. So you have the, you have the main verse and then you have different sentiments. And I always try and include a border sentiment, which is what we're going to use on there. And now you see, because I'm recording this video and I'm not doing it as a live, I've got to behave. But if you watch any of my lives, you'll know that I'm not normally this well behaved. So I'm just popping that in. Excuse me if you can see the top of my head. I'm just making sure that that's straight. So we'll put the magnets on to hold the card in place. Pick that up. And I'm going to stamp this in the same two colours. So we're going, to, we're going to do the special day end in the Uncharted Mariner. And we're going to do the beginning of the sentiment with a little bit of an overlap with the peeled paint. So where we get the overlap, we should get a lovely two-tone effect. That's just, that's just beautiful. Distress oxides are not always the best to stamp on clear stamps, but... Uh, Oh, I've got a little bit of fluff on that stamp, so let me just take that off. Where are you? There you are. Now going, I'm going to go in again just to make sure I've covered that properly. You have to be careful with glitter and things. If you get a little speck of glitter on your stamps, it will come out with a little dot on it like mine has, but it's fine. We'll go back in. Highlight the colours and fill in the gap. That's just beautiful. So clean your stamp. Put it back on the sheet so you don't lose it. Put it back on the carrier sheet. And then we've got that ready to go. So I'll just bring that in and show you what that looks like. So remember, Distress Oxides stay wet for a while. So just give them a chance to dry. So I'm just going to show you how fab that looks. Are those colours together just beautiful? So Peeled Paint and Uncharted Mariner, gorgeous together. So I've just got to let that dry for a second longer. And we're going to come to the first panel now, which is still damp. The first panel is still damp. But we should be able to work with that. I'm just grabbing a magnetic sheet, a box of dyes. So top tips for flattening kinky card. So I would normally leave this to dry 100%. It's still damp, so we might not get a proper finish, but you'll get the gist. So I'm gonna get a little bit of kitchen roll. I'm going to pop that just to the side here. You won't be able to see it, but just to the side. I've got a, a plastic tub here with some of my dies in, just for the weight. I'm going to mist the back of this 
lightly with water. So th this is the reverse side, not the side with the not the side with the ink on. I'm going to put that face down, face down onto the kitchen roll, and put the tub over the top with the weight on it. So as that's drying, it flattens it for you. Let's just see how wet the other one is. That one's still a little bit wet, so I'm going to be really naughty because this is supposed to be a quick video and I'm already 25 minutes in. So I'm going to be really naughty and do this. I would never normally do that. I would always leave that to dry naturally, even though it does look fabulous. Obviously, the more water you use, the kinky card's going to get, and it's because you've adjusted the fibres of the card. And we'll repeat what we've just done. We'll repeat what we've just done here. Pop some, spray some water on the back of there. And I'm going to pop that in between the layer of the other one. Put that on there. So I've now got a tub there. I'm going to put another one on top just to give it some extra weight. Yeah, you can hear I've got hundreds of tubs in the background full of dyes. <laughs> so the more weight on there, obviously, the, the flatter it's going to get when you're um, when you're letting that dry. So leave that as long as you possibly can. We're going to oh, we're going to come back to this and we're going to stamp a few extra butterflies to cut out and decorate our card with. So I'm just wiping up the water. This is the beauty of these stamps because you can use them, you can use them in so many different ways. So this is the one that I've chosen. I'm literally just going to stamp this in the same two colors. So I'm Chartered Mariner and Peel Paint. You can do this whatever colors you like. I've just chosen these two because I, I like them together. We'll pop that straight on there. So all of these butterflies, if if you if you can see, if I bring that closer and you can see, so all of these little butterflies you can fussy cut out. You can even fussy cut some of the postmarks, but I just want a few butterflies for this, just so we can decorate. We can decorate on the front of the card, and a couple maybe for the inside. So all this is giving the time, giving the card time to dry as well. So that's now, isn't that beautiful? That's dried perfectly. So this time I am going to be really naughty. So I'm going to overlap a lot of my colours. Remember the oxides won't harm your stamp. And it doesn't matter if you get colours bleeding into each other from two different colours on your ink pads because they will they will just fix themselves so i'll just bring this in and show you in a second what i'm doing give this a good coverage and i'm trying to make sure i've got two colors on all of the butterflies that i'm going to use which i'm only really going to use the bigger ones i'm just going to put a bit more uncharted mariner on that one yeah, that's fab. I think that's enough. I could go back in again if I need to add more colour. So let's just show you what that looks like. Look. So I've just overlapped the colours to give me a lovely two-tone effect. So I'm just rubbing that on. Let the ink transfer onto the cardstock. Remember, it's not watercolour card we're using. It's regular card. So we should get a lovely kind of soft stamped impression as opposed to using versifying clairs where you would get a really solid really solid color oh that looks amazing that looks fabulous i don't even need to put any more ink on there i'll just bring that in and show you oh let me come further away so the lights can pick it up there you go is that not just beautiful it looks like we've watercolored these and that's just that's just the quality of the ink and the quality of the cardstock and obviously a fabulously designed stamp i'm going to clean this for when we get ready to do the front of the card when that panel is dried 
I always clean my stamps, I'm a bit OCD. First to admit it. And I'm gonna, in fact, I'll just leave it. I'll just leave it on the stamping block because that's where it's gonna be anyway. I'm gonna take off the excess from this. I'm just gonna roll over with the kitchen roll just to take off the excess ink. You can see how much, oops, that's better. <laughs> I don't know why the lights do that. You can see how much excess ink was on that stamp. And I'm gonna cut a few of these out. So I'm literally just gonna fussy cut a few of these out. It's not quite dry yet. And it really doesn't matter how sharp these are because the oxides, the oxides are designed to be like that. If I just show you that one, look, you can see we've still got all that fabulous detail from the butterflies, but we've got a lovely watered down effect. So I'm just literally just gonna fussy cut a couple of these. I'm not gonna do them all because you'll get bored watching. And I didn't want to do this ahead of time because it's nice to see how it's done. Chop that down there. I'm chopping the antenna off. I know, I know. It's very naughty. So we could use this to decoupage onto the actual stamp, the front panel, which I might do. I might still do that. I'll see how it goes. This is why you can't beat stamping. So many choices. In fact, you can, I, I, would, I never get bored with stamping. So we've now created an embellishment from the same stamp. I'll take the bigger one. I'll just take the bigger ones. And maybe one of the smaller ones for the inside. I'm the worst fussy cutter ever. I've got no patience, which is why the antennas are being chopped off. If you've got more patience than me, just fussy cut round the antenna. <laughs> and you'll get a lovely butterfly with the proper things coming off it. But no, I'm doing this for speed. Oh, it's beautiful. I, this, I love stamps that, give, that just keep on giving and these stamps just keep on giving. So we're going to create our panel from this. We're also going to create the embellishments from this. And it's just fabulous. So I'm cutting quickly. Don't have to be perfect because the edges are going to be glittered. go oops that's another one one more one more and then I'm done cutting and then hopefully we can come back to the panels and see how dry they are it's actually not a bad thing to stamp on regular cards. If you're using oxides, it's not a bad thing to um, to, st to keep the card a little bit damp, particularly if it's not a watercolor card. Because sometimes you get, you get this lovely watery effect without having to try. So we've now created look, four little embellishments. I'm gonna save this one, this little bit at the top, because I know myself well enough to know that I'll probably use those later, or even on this card. So here we go. So let's come back to the panels and see how dry they are. In fact, before I do that, I'll stick this on here. So I'm just gonna stick this straight on here and I'm just putting the whole thing on and then I will trim it down when it goes on the actual card. So for all you lot that know me, I've now made 
A6 cards this year. And I've made some cards without flowers, which is just ridiculous for me. And I'm now making another flat card. Look how that pops once you put the olive green, olive grove cardstock. Beautiful. Right, panels. Let's see where we're at with the panels. It's not still not, it's still a little bit damp. So I'm going to leave that one a bit longer. Let's see how we're doing with the other one. That's still a little bit damp, but we should be able to stamp on that one. So we'll work on the top one. And I'll put the other one back for a little bit longer. So this is our top panel. So this is the front of the card. I'm just bring that in and show you. So literally, literally no effort. It was no effort to create this. Ink on the acrylic block, spritzed with water, plonked onto the card, excess taken away. See what I mean about if you leave all these... If you leave the excess, you get all these beautiful, beautiful watermarks. So I'm going to bring the stamp, stamping platform back in. It does normally, just so you know, if you want to replicate this, it does normally take a good half an hour for the panels to dry naturally. So this, I would normally have left that a good half an hour. In fact, if I just show you, look, you'll be able to see we've still got little kinky bits. Yeah, that they would have been gone had I have left this long enough to dry. There would be no kinky bits. Unless you want kinky bits. So let's put that on there. So I'm going to line the stamp up. So the stamp is obviously bigger than this panel. But I'm literally just going to put it where I want it. See how close I can get without affecting the magnets. You could absolutely do this with an acrylic block as well. So I'm going to put the stamp where I want it. And hopefully you can just see underneath. If I bring that in a little bit closer. You can just see the ink panel underneath, look. So you can see how wide the ink panel is. So we're going to stamp this and we're going to shabby up the edges so we don't get sharp edges. because we don't want sharp edges on this. So I'm gonna ink this up and I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go one color. Or should I do both? No, we'll do both. We'll do both. So I'm using more green where we've got the Uncharted Mar Mariner. So we'll do an overlap. This will probably take two stamps to get a lovely sharp, a lovely impression. And then Uncharted Mariner, we'll double it up. So I'm just patting it. I'm going to show you another little trick in a minute. Full of tricks today. What's going on? So we've got the Uncharted Mariner on. Blend that a little bit more. Blend that a little bit more. And that looks fab. So we're going to take now another piece of kitchen roll. In fact, I won't. I'll use, I'll use this dirty piece. I'm going to take this bit of kitchen roll. And if you did this with a, a wipe, oops, which you absolutely can do. So if you got a, a wipe a wet wipe or a cloth with water you can just take the ink away from where you want it and what you would end up with is is clear clear edges i don't want clear edges with this i want them to be almost like a second or third generation so i'm using i'm going to double that up although my fingers are already dirty and i'm just patting around the edges look i'll bring this in and show you in a second so instead of having areas with no ink, where I've taken the ink away and it looks like there's no ink there, there is, there's still a little bit there. So we will get like a ghost in effect. So just take some more off the edge. 
and we'll stamp that. So you can see how much ink I've just taken off that stamp, quite a bit, and we'll stamp. So this is almost to the top of this card, but at the top, we're going to get a really pale. Uh, so at the top and bottom, it's going to be really pale because we've removed most of the ink. And let's see how strong the colour is before I know whether I need to go in again. Oh, that just looks amazing. In fact, I, I don't think it needs a, I don't think it needs a second inking. I'm just going to just rub it again, just to make sure I've not missed any bits. That just looks fabulous. That just looks absolutely fabulous. And is that not just beautiful? And so easy to do. So this is where we removed the ink, look. So remember I just said it doesn't, it gives you a ghosting effect or like a second or third. It's perhaps even a third, yeah, it's probably a third generation effect that you've got there from removing the ink. Yeah, but doesn't that panel look fabulous? I'm going to pop that to one side. I'm going to clean this stamp. You must get fed up with me saying that, but I have to clean my stamps. Even though I do have two of everything, I keep one that I work with and one that's new. So I've cleaned off as much of that ink as I can. I look like the Incredible Hulk. Well, with a bit of blue in as well. <laughs> Let's pop that back on its sheet because we're done with that now. right the first time round. I love I love panel stamps. There's just so much you can do with them. So remember had we have done had we have done this technique with the circles, so instead of having the panel from the uh, the border acrylic block, we could have absolutely had a circle and just used a section of this stamp look and you would still get that same fabulous effect. So just pop the cover sheet back on well I hope I'm showing you something different I mean we have done we have done inky techniques before but I don't think I've ever shown you it on an acrylic block so that's something a little bit different so I'm going to let that dry for a second if I just wiggle by you might be able to see that some of the, there you go some of the ink is still wet so I'm going to leave that let that dry as long as I can and let's come back to the other panel and see how we're doing with the other panel. We could still do it being left a little bit longer. So I'm going to leave that in the open air now. You can see how it's flattened though, almost. So I'm going to leave that in the open air. I'm not going to cover that up. Put that over there. And we'll stick these panels together. So I'm going to pop this on with just glue and again top tip for you if you are gluing a piece of card that's already a little bit damp which this one is you should pop this underneath your a, a heavy weight like the die box like I was just doing and then as the glue dries pretend you can't see that we'll have a butterfly there as the glue dries it makes it flat keeps it flat I'm going to pop that to one side, pop the cover on, and pop one of the die boxes on top. And then we'll come to this panel. Let's see if I can stamp the verse on there. So it needs to be that way around because we've got the Uncharted Mariner at the bottom on the front. It's still a little bit damp. Let me just waft for a sec. But while we're waiting, we'll glitter these butterflies. The longer I can leave it, the better. So we'll just glitter the tips of the butterfly wings. So I'm using Diamond Dazzle, as you know, it's my favorite. Diamond Dazzle, transparent glitter, works with every color, works on anything. So I'm just gonna get my tweezers, I'm gonna hold that in the center, and just bend those wings back a little bit. I'm not coloring these in, so you probably noticed I've not, 
if I wanted to watercolour these, I could absolutely do that because the we've used the oxides. So I could just get my water brush. I'll show you one there in a second, actually, while we're waiting for this to dry a bit. Um, I could just use my water brush and pull some of the colour in. But let's just glitter these wings. So I'm just doing the edges of the wings. And because this is PVA glue, it does have some water content. So if the ink is not 100% dry, which it isn't on there, what you'll find is, if I just wiggle that, you can just see. Obviously, when the glue's dried, you'll see it better. But what you'll find is that the colour is pulled from the, uh, from the glue because of the water content. And you end up with a lovely, a lovely shade of the ink from underneath. Let's just put these on here. Do you know when I was planning this, I thought, oh, it'll only be an hour. Mind you, we might be. It's only three quarters of an hour. I just wanted to show you something different today. So show you how to use those gorgeous strip stamps because I love them. And it's one of those things because I release something new every month. You tend to forget what we've already collected. So I'm going to make a conscious effort for you on the YouTube videos to use things that I've released over the years. Just jogs your memory and gives you some fresh ideas. Because I'm good like that. <laughs> Let's just get some glue on there. <laughs> I'm nearly done. Last one. So I'm just holding it with my flat nose tweezers, which are my favourites. My, fa my favourite, favourite tweezers, because I use them for everything. And a little bit of diamond dazzle. So let's just put them to one side. It's just, it's just enough, just enough bling. You can obviously do as much as you like, but I like to just do a little bit on the edge of the in fact, Let me try and show you this now, because it's pulling the colour. Look, can you see on that? on that green edge the glue is pulling the colour from the ink underneath it's fabulous right put that over there without squashing the butterflies I'm just going to do what I said I was going to do and just get one of my water brushes and show you that although this isn't watercolour card this is just regular card you can use your water brush and pull some of that colour in. So you can still go in and colour the butterflies if you wanted to afterwards. In that fab. Just with a bit of water. And now I can't use that one because it won't match. I'm sure I've done enough. Right, let's get this on here. So I'm gonna I'm now gonna attempt to stamp the verse. It is still not quite dry enough, but we're gonna go for it. We'll go for it and see what happens. So at this point we can do two things. So on the front of the card look I had the um, uncharted mariner at the bottom and I had the peeled paint at the top. So I want I because I'm a little bit OCD, I'm going to have it the same. So the inside of the card where the verse is going to, the verse is just going to sit in the middle of there. Um, I'm going to keep the keep it the same, but you could you could alternate it if you wanted it to, and have it the other way around. It looks fabulous either. In fact, I might do that. Hmm, I might do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it the opposite way on because I can. And this is going against everything that I would normally do. But I'm going to do it. Because I can. And because it's a piece of card. And if I don't like it when it's done, I can do it again. Right, so we'll take the verse. Put the verse where we want it. So this is the special day verse. I'm just going to have it in the middle. 
And because we've watered this down, had, had this have just been solid colour, we wouldn't be able to stamp over it because the, the words would just get lost in the colour that's underneath it. But because this is watered down, we can, we know that it'll be okay because the ink from the pad is going to be stronger than the watercolour background behind it. So I'm just trying to make sure that's straight. That looks straight to me. Let's bring the magnets in. And we'll see how we go with this. So we, we will do the two-tone again. And in fact, I'll put the green on first. I'm going to put a base layer of the peeled paint first. So I'm doing the whole stamp with peeled paint. And this just gives me a nice base colour. And then when I go in a second time, the peeled paint will be stronger, it will be a bit richer in colour. So I'm going to go all over again with the peeled paint. But this time I'm going to do patches of the Uncharted Mariner. So let's have some Uncharted Mariner there. Some there. Some there. And a little bit down there. That's actually stamped quite good considering the cardstock underneath is still damp. So we've not done a bad job with that. I'm just getting a bit more. I don't want too much green. I want a little bit more of the Uncharted Mariner because it's a stronger colour. And I'll go back in and stamp again. You can already see, look, how that's going to look underneath. Oh, that just looks amazing. That looks fabulous. I'll just clean this. I hope you're learning something. And I'm not sure I'm not teaching. I'll be I'll be getting these in the in the sink straight after this video. Put my stamp back. The top tip for you, by the way, because. You know I don't like to be dirty. Best thing to get that off is either imperial leather, bars of soap, or shampoo. Shampoo gets it off quite well. And a scrubbing brush. <laughs> so let's just show you that. Doesn't that just look fabulous? It's kind of arty. It's kind of arty because we've got that lovely wash background and I can't now, but if I'd have wanted to move this corner, which I don't because I quite like it, but if I'd have wanted to move that before I stamped the verse, I could have just squirted that with water and it would move it would move again. But I quite like that panel. So it's not dry. For Wiggly, you can see the sentiment there. If you look at the Y on day, you can see that it's still damp. So we'll let that dry for a second. Oops and we'll get cracking with putting this card together. So this is gonna go on the front of the card. Oops. Just flat, it's all flat apart from the sentiment, which is gonna be, the sentiment is gonna be on foam tape. It's just gonna go on the front. I would have normally washed my hands before I did this stage. Just so that I don't transfer any colour onto the bits that I want to like that, onto the bits that I want to keep clean. Just hold that down for a second. Just let the glue grab. Made sure the inky bits are face up. Lovely. We're not far off done. We'll only be five minutes now. 
Well, my five minutes and yours are probably two different things. So I'm just going to take the excess off the sentiment. Which was more than I thought it was going to be. And then we'll glue that onto the panel. Remember, if you if you haven't uh, if you haven't used my PVA glue before, it's thicker than the average PVA, so you get a really good you get a really good strong bond. It's got less water content than most PVA glues, and in fact, it's the only glue that I use now. I'm just holding that for a second. I'm going to pop that onto the inside of the card and then I'm going to flatten it with the weight while we put the foam tape on the sentiment. Just put that in the centre. And you can see where it's still poking up. Look, that's because I need to weigh that down. So I'm going to pop that in there. Pop it underneath the dies just for a minute, just to let that, just to give that some weight and some time to squash. Right, so while we're waiting for that, I'll put this in the bin. Can we take a second? So I'll give you a quick reminder while we're just leaving that for a second. So all the products that I've used today if they're in stock, are available on my website, which is honeypotcrafts.co.uk. Please remember to like my video, leave me a lovely comment, and subscribe to the channel. So if you hit the subscribe button, you just need to fill in your email, and then you have become a subscriber. And every time I do a live on YouTube or upload a new video, you'll automatically get a notification. Um, you can find us on Facebook. So if you go on Facebook and search for Sentimentally Yours, you will find me and my team there. And you can also find our lovely little Facebook group. And I'm just trying to find the, here it is, the screen. So I couldn't, I couldn't do a fancy thing with a Facebook logo for this because the, the name of the group is too long. <laughs> so if you go on Facebook and you want to join our lovely crafters group, just search for Crafting with Phil Martin and Sentimentally Yours and you have to ask to join the group. It's a private group so that I can check everybody who's applying and providing you are a proper crafter and not just some random Joe blogs, you will be allowed to join my group which is fabulous and filled with lots of lovely crafters who are just amazing right so let's get this put together now so this is going to go on here and i'm going to put that on foam tape so i'm just going to move that up so i'm going to have that just raised and i want it just off center so about about there i'm just going to put a row of foam tape on there so that i can do it edge to edge Take off the backing, and now I can position this where I want it. I'll try and go in between those two butterflies there, so just a bit to the edge. And that looks straight enough to me. And I'll flip that over, and with my big scissors, I'll trim off the excess. And I am going through a little bit of foam tape, but good job I've got my big scissors. nearly there i'm not going to put any glitter on this i might do later but i'm not going to do it just yet because i might uh, i don't know whether it actually needs it because we've got the glitter on the butterflies so i'll have a couple of little butterflies on here so we're going to have the biggest one down there in the opposite direction to the to that one so glue gel for this a little bit of glue gel just so I can raise that off the page a little bit. So a little bit of glue gel. 
and I've got to have one there because it's got ink on it and that'll just annoy me so let's go the opposite direction to that one and this one I'm going to put on the inside it's not quite dry yet so I'll put it in but I won't close the card because it needs to set before I can close the card properly. So still on glue gel but I am going to squash that down. And the reason I do it with glue gel is because it's going nowhere once it's set. So let's pop that just there. And we're just going to finish off with a couple of... I don't know whether you've seen these before. It seems such a long time. It seems like such a long time since I um, I showed you these. So these are our pearls. And these are the ombre pearls that are the two-tone ones. And this is the uh, Ocean Spray set. And the Ocean Spray is a lovely, lovely blue and green. And it just matches... It just matches these colours really nicely, look. So I'm going to put the Ocean Spray. In fact, you know what? I'm not going to put them in the corners. I'm just going to have, I'm just going to have a couple dotted on the stamp. So these are going on with glue. So I'm just going to have a couple dotted, dotted around the stamp. So one, two, three five so I'm using my lovely pickup tool with the wax tip so it's easier to take them out of the out of the lid and position them where you want them I'm just going to give you a little tip because this card was still damp, so it's starting to kink up a little bit, which is going to bug me. So I've got five little pearls on. I'm not going to put any on the inside. And there we go. Let's clear that mess up. Clear that mess. I'm going to show you the stamps one more time and what I've used. And then I'm going to get a coffee. So where's the packet for this? I can't see it. Which one, two, three, four, five. I'll find it in a sec because it can't be far away. Anyway, so here we go. I'll try and find it in a minute. So what's happening is, look, the card is buckling a bit because the card was still wet. So while the glue is still drying, just do what I did with everything else and just put a tub at one end a tub at the other to weigh that down whilst it's drying and then once the glue is set it will be perfectly flat so don't don't panic so I'm just going to show you how fab that looks so just with one stamp well one stamp the scent the verse stamp set which has given us that lovely sentiment we've created the lovely butterfly embellishments from this Gorgeous watercolored background and an acrylic block. And then we've got inside, we've got the verse. There we go. And come further away so the light picks it up. There we go. So you've got that lovely verse that is still really legible. There truly couldn't be a more perfect day to say this comes with love and best wishes on your special day. And that just fabulous and so, so easy to do. So once this is set, you could absolutely just pop that in an envelope an a5 envelope won't harm the butterflies because they've been put on with glue gel so they'll just spring up they'll just spring up uh once they put out the envelope so hopefully i've shown you something a little bit different today i'm going to leave that there while i go through the stamps again even though i can't find the packet for that one i've found it because i really want you if i really want you to treat yourself to one of these strip stamps because the strip stamps just they just keep on giving 
So I'm going to pop, I'll put the butterflies this side and the dragonflies that side. So we have used the, we have used the journey for this one. So the journey is the one that I've used for the demo today. So the journey is the one with the travel theme, postmarks, etc. Then you have moments in time and moments in time features clocks and the quill and the fountain pen down there. And then you have moving mechanisms, which I just think is, is, is my favourite, if I'm honest with you. Moving mechanisms is my favourite. So you've got the, and I shouldn't really say that, but it is. You've got the cogs in there. You've got the gears in there. You've still got beautiful focal butterflies, crackle, script, more crackle, and a little bit of honeycomb in the background, if I just bring that in to show you. So that is the Papillon Slim Strips. And then you have the Dragonfly Oasis strims, uh, Slim Strips. What a mouthful, eh? So this one is Be True to Yourself. So be your true self, you're already fabulous, is the sentiment that's featured within there. You can just make that out without blinding you with the lights. Then you have Take Time, which is the one that has the, um, the paisley in there, some postmarks, some clocks, and a different pattern altogether, different dragonflies. And that one has Take Time to do what makes you happy. And I love that. And then you've got this one, which is different again, called Believe in Magic. And the Believe in Magic one has different dragonflies again. It has crackle, little stars in the background. Uh, and the sentiment on this one is Believe in Magic and you will find it everywhere, which I just absolutely love. The two colours of ink that I've used today are, I need a coffee, my voice is going, Peeled Paint and Uncharted Mariner. The pearls that I've used are Ocean Spray, Ombre Pearls. Everything that I've used today, assuming it's in stock, is on the website, honeypotcraft.co.uk. Please remember to like and subscribe to my channel so you get all the notifications when I'm doing a live on YouTube or when I've upload, uploaded a new video. And there you have it so hopefully i forgot to show you the verse so hopefully i've shown you a different way to use your acrylic blocks with an ink pad a couple of ink pads the verse that i used was the uh verse the verse collection volume one the verse library volume one and this is a special day and there you have it so hopefully you've enjoyed that i thoroughly enjoyed showing you something a little bit different and showing you a different way to use um to create a beautiful inky background, an inky panel background using an acrylic block. The acrylic block I used was the border one, which is the slim, the slim one. You can use any of my acrylic blocks to do this. So thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, everybody. Have fun. And please remember to tag me on any post that you, you create with any of my Sentimentally Yours products. So you can either tag Phil Martin or tag Sentimentally Yours and hopefully I'll get to see it. You will find me on Instagram as well with the same name as Twitter, which is Phil M. Martin. So thanks, everybody. Hope you've enjoyed that. Until next time. Bye.